Hello, welcome to Worship at Trinity Lutheran Church and our YouTube presence on this, the seventh Sunday of Easter. It is our last Sunday where we are only available remotely and is also the first Sunday on this new recording device. So if you see a whole lot more of up here than you've been seeing for the last year, uh, it's new camera. Um, so, it, but this is the last day where we are recording and available only remotely. Starting Sunday, May 23rd, we will be gathering in person for Holy Communion at 9 a.m. And a recording of that service will be available um, sometime later on. That's the plan at the moment. Um, and that will continue to evolve as we find the best ways to bring our service to you uh, when we're doing it live. So far, we've been editing pieces uh, and presenting it to you all in one nice chunk that we, we know what it's going to look like before it comes out. Um, most of you have seen an update from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that came out on Thursday, uh, lifting many of the restrictions uh, for those who have received the COVID vaccination. Um, Trinity Lutheran Church is going to continue with its plan to gather outdoors for the first four weeks, uh, and we are going to continue masking when we gather, regardless of our vaccination status. Uh, we, we decided we're not going to check people's vaccination cards when they show up, and we want to be able to welcome children who are not eligible for the vaccine. And so in order to be able to do that safely right now, we're masking and we're outdoors. Uh, Bishop Guffian of the Indiana Kentucky Synod has uh, offered some guidance on this. There will be a link to that letter in the description of this video and I'll also send it out in the email that came with this video. And, and I will try to link to it on our homepage as well. Uh, there are gonna be several links <laughs> offered to you in the course of this worship service. Um, but that, that's one I want you to look at. He raises some issues there and offers some guidance. And, and many of the things that he says are things that the worship leadership here have been mulling over for a long time and that the worship team have, have taken into account when putting together the, the plan for how to return. Um, so there'll be a link to that in the description below. We will be gathering. We will be outdoors and masked to be good neighbors to those who the restrictions have not been lifted for yet. Um, that's what I've got, except that I, I did mention this is the last time, and, and we don't know for certain, but I think we're hopeful that worship is only remote. Um, and so there'll be a little thing about that in the course of the worship service about what that's been like, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Let's sing our opening song.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your beloved world that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Word of God, Word of Life. A reading from 1 John. If we receive human testimony, 
the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Word of God, Word of Life. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. It's disturbing watching what is happening in Israel and Palestine right now. Um, it is disturbing seeing the video, hearing the stories, and, and it, I don't think we can ignore it. I mean, all of our stories take place practically right there in the cities where this is happening. Look, look at Acts, our first reading. It's set in the contested city. The story in Acts is of replacing Judas. 
We don't know exactly what the point of the 12 was, but we know Jesus had 12 around him or, or thought there was some significance to this. And all, the lists of who makes up the 12 all differ. Um, but 12 is an important number for the Hebrews. You know, there are 12 sons of Jacob. There are 12 tribes of Israel. There are 12 minor prophets. Um, so Jesus had 12. And with jo Judas gone, the uh, a community says, we need to have another one of the 12. We don't know why, and the 12 disappear. They show up a few chapters later to complain that they're being asked to, to do stuff that they think somebody else should do, and, and so deacons are created so that the 12 don't have to, to do this work, and then we never hear from them again. But it, apparently it was an important question, what do we do about the 12? And so they said, God's going to pick. Right? Now, they say God's going to pick, but they clearly have a, a favored candidate, and the names give it away. All right? When a person has multiple names, they're a big deal. All right? I'm Tim. If I'm Timothy Andrew Leitsky, suddenly I'm, I'm coming with an announcement. Right? So we tell they have Joseph Bar Sabbas, who was called Justice. Joseph. Good old name, one of the sons of Jacob, hey, 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 hey. Got to have a 12 that's in line with Jacob, bring in Joseph. And Joseph means he will add. We're adding to the 11, uh-huh. And then, then Bar Sabbath means son of the Sabbath. You don't get a whole lot holier than that. You know, child of the Lord's day. Uh, and then he's, got, he's known by this Latin name, Justus, which is easier for us to figure out as English speakers. Just, right, righteous. He will add son of the Sabbath, the righteous one. This is who they want, all right? Because the other guy is Matthias. And that's a Matthias. Matthias is a shortened form of the name Matthias. Um, Matthias is a Pretty good name, too, the gift of the Lord. Um, but Matthias is a contracted version. It's like, you know, instead of saying gift of the Lord, it's like saying, I mean, everything's from God technically, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but clearly some of it's better than other stuff. Be like my name. Uh, Timothy means honoring God, right? But, but saying Tim, that's only part of the word honoring. It doesn't even have the God part in it. It's like, he's it's, it's reputable, I guess. God picks Matthias. The gift of the Lord is indeed the gift of the Lord. And he will add son of the Sabbath, the righteous one. I don't, I don't know if there's anything wrong with him necessarily, but he's not the one that God wants. Let's look at that story uh, maybe through the lens of our gospel today where Jesus is talking to the Father, perhaps even I think the ascended Jesus, his, his words to the Father are kind of written back into his earthly life. Uh, he says to the Father, you know, he's not, um, he's leaving the world, but his disciples are not, right? God will work through people. God will work through people and their communities and their structures. So this human community of the disciples and their, their need for 12, whatever that comes from. I mean, Jesus had it, but who knows, maybe it wasn't even that big of a deal to Jesus and people latched onto it. But God will work through that. The gift of the Lord will come into that situation. And that's a little disturbing to me because I'm, the idea that God can work through human institutions is a little frightening. I prefer my God to kind of stay out of things unless I need help, in which case I expect immediate intervention in my favor. But that's in keeping with, with John 17. Um, Jesus, however, is leaving the world and, and is not of this world, nor, nor are the people in it. Um, Jesus will act in ways that are wholly other than this world and unexpected. And that's what happens with Matthias. The one you don't expect gets chosen. Yeah, his name says gift of the Lord, but he's clearly not your first choice. 
God's choice is different than your choice frequently. Um, and there's an idea in, in the gospel of, of the church needing protection. Right? That the church needs our protection, not so much from the world, but from the evil one. We would say from, from sin. Maybe uh, One of our ELCA statements, peace not walls, refers to sin's persistent, pervasive, subtle power. Persistent, pervasive, and subtle power. Sin is disturbing. It keeps coming after you, and in ways that you don't even think about, and we need protection from them. And, and interestingly enough, I, you know, while there's no obvious ill consequence to picking Joseph Barsabbas justice over Matthias, um, our expectations there, our construction of what God wants, our assumption, this is the candidate, and then Matt's there because there needs to be somebody else, right? You need somebody to run against on the ballot. Um, our ideas about what God is looking for and about what constitutes holy can have bad consequences. We don't ever see them here because God cuts us off. Like, no, 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 we're not, we're not going there, all right? That, that way of deciding what God wants, deciding who other people are and, and defining them uh, is a power that, that humans who have the luxury of doing will do. Uh, we in the West do this to people who are from the geographic East. Um, Edward Said, great um, literary scholar, political uh, activist, um, had the famous book, Orientalism. You know, Orientalism is the way in which Westerners, people from Western Europe, but also the United States, Western culture, other those from the East. We define them as kind of mysterious. Um, they, you know, they possess a, a great deal of mystical knowledge and yet are backward. And, and, and so we, we can control who they are. We define what they are and what, what they do that we do like and they don't like, and everything's done in our Western terms. Right? Um, Christians have done this to Jews from basically the beginning. Right? Christians have determined what makes somebody Jewish and then defined themselves over against that when we're not that, and Jews do the following things. And you read Christian readings on Jews, and, and, and the, even the ones that are nice, and most of them are awful, Right? Even the writings that are nice, the Christian writings that are okay, still make a lot of assumptions and say a lot of things that a contemporary Jew would have said, where, where are you coming up with this stuff? We don't do that. They won't even mention the rotten things Christians say because they're just obviously wrong, but many people believed them, and many still do. Westerners <clears throat> do this with Arabs, right? We, we decide what they are, what they believe, what their behaviors are. They're over there, away from us. We don't like them being here because it, it disrupts, it disturbs our idea about what they are. Uh, and they're going to behave certain ways, and so we're going to identify with people who behave closer to the way we want, and we're going to support them in their struggle against these others who are strange. That sin's persistent, pervasive, and subtle power, defining who people are, determining what is right based on what is mine, and anything that deviates from that is other and wrong. I find this disturbing. This happens in the Holy Land now where we, Westerners, other Arabs who live there, Arab Jews, Arab Christians, Arab Muslims, doesn't matter, they are other, and we define them. Thinking of the Holy Land in terms of John 17, uh, we don't get to leave the world, though there's a whole crop of Christians who believe that we will get whisked away when certain events transpire. Those events always keep getting put off. We're not going to leave the world. God is going to work through people and their communities and their structures. So you have things like the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land 
which you know, is the body of Christ in that place, but is also a human institution advocating for peace and justice in a very difficult situation. And in all of this, God remains holy other, right? We other the people who live there, but God is holy other. As in God will not endorse the situation on the ground as being okay. The situation on the ground in Palestine is one that increasingly human rights organizations identify using the South African term apartheid. This is not an equal conflict between Palestinians and Israelis. The the rockets that come from from Gaza, the stones thrown by Palestinians, they, they are weapons intending to hurt or to kill or to terrorize. They are not okay. They're wrong. They are also far weaker than anything that the nation state of Israel is hurling at them. And they are not commensurate with the the lack of access to water, food, electricity, basic human dignity, the fact that people are packed into refugee camps. They're packed into the, you know, they're, they're, they're moved off of their own land and stuck in cities that aren't their own and, and then treated like animals at checkpoints. This, this is not an equal situation, all right? It is unequal. God does not endorse the situation. God does not say, you know, your way of looking at things is cool with me, all right? God will not be equated to any nation. We we, like most people throughout history, assume God favors us because we live here, right? And, and God favors us and people who are like we are. God says, eh, I don't favor any particular nation. I kind of like people. People all over the place. God will not support the rule of one people over another. That's a basic Christian concept. I mean, that's St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. You, you, can't, you can't act like this. God is not impressed with our human strength. Weapons? So what? God's got armies of angels. Your weapons are pathetic. But most of all, God won't give up. The situation in Palestine is enough to make someone want to give up. Every time it gets worse, more people like I give up, and some still stick it out, and you wonder how they do it. Well, it, the situation seems hopeless. But God refuses to give up. God has disturbing to do. The situation's disturbing, well, God has some disturbing to do. What's God doing with us as Christians living here in the United States regarding the Holy Land in light of what he says in John 17? Well, first of all, there's the matter of what makes us God's people, what makes us holy. The idea of being holy comes from our continually hearing and following the word Jesus Christ. Jesus says in the gospel, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. We become holy by constantly hearing Jesus, by Jesus constantly disturbing us. Even though I would rather Jesus just stay away unless I need things, Jesus is constantly talking to me. We are sent, according to John 17. We're made holy, we're sanctified, and we are sent into the world to be a faithful presence. Faithful presence is hard, and I think it's hard for Lutherans because we have justification by grace through faith drilled into us to the point that we often make it sound like what that means is there's nothing we can do, and so we're going to do nothing. And really what it means is there's nothing we can do to impress God. Stop trying. 
God doesn't need your good works, but your neighbors do. God's taking care of the whole, are you loved? Are you lovable? Are you saved? Is there meaning in life? What is it all about? What happens when I... God's got those things taken care of, all right? You can think about them. You can ponder them. You can come up with great ideas about them. You can research them and, and, and do it trusting God has it under God's control. But your neighbor still needs love, just like you do. So we are a faithful presence that works. And as disturbing as the situation can be, we can be faithful by taking action. In the ELCA's statement for peace in God's world, we define the church as being a faithful presence. We're a deliberating presence. We're able to talk about things like this, right? We don't pick candidates. We don't say, yeah, you better vote for this guy or God's going to get you. But we talk about issues and we educate about issues and we take stands on issues. We talk about ourselves as a serving community that, that takes care of others, that finds where there is need and helps out. But we talk about ourselves as being a disturbing presence. We say in that document, we are faithful when we refuse to be silent and instead when we denounce. What do we denounce? When we denounce elevating any nation to the role of God. Whenever any nation thinks that it's, it's got a divine mission, we, we immediately put the brakes on. We denounce finding ultimate security in weapons and warfare. Lutherans live in a very difficult two-kingdom situation. We provide a lot of military chaplains. You can serve in the military and, and be a Lutheran. There are some Christian churches that won't allow that. And, and we do that, and we say, <laughs> that's also not your ultimate security. Can't be. Right? We denounce any state saying that there's a right of any people to rule over any others. People are equal. I don't care what your ethnicity is, neither does God. We denounce any state that promises perfect and peaceful society through the self-sufficient self work of humans. Right? This, this is our, used to be our old complaint about communism, right? The idea that humans could fix all their problems on their own. Um, no, no, we, we, no, we can't. And we denounce anyone who despairs of the possibility of peace. No. We have to keep trying because God doesn't give up. God keeps disturbing. We're not just a disturbing presence. We're a reconciling presence. We work to bring people together or to counter those who would other people who are not in our group. And we encourage imaginative solutions. Things that are crazy that you say, this will never work. These people will not get along. Well, have we tried it? Have we tried it recently? Have we tried it with these people in charge? You know, I've got a crazy idea that might actually make the fighting stop and ensure the dignity of everybody in the situation. Those kinds of solutions, the church gets behind them. It is disturbing our work as Christians. If it is work that you are interested in pursuing, you can go to elca.org slash advocacy. I'm going to put a link to that in the video description below, and, and I'll have a link to that uh, probably on the website or in the email that comes out with this worship service, elca.org slash advocacy to find ways that you can get involved. Uh, there is also a place where you can contact directly your representatives in government about what is going on in Palestine right now. I will have a link to that in the video description below. This is an invitation. It is a way to be faithful, to be a faithful disturbing presence in a situation where despair would be a very easy yet unfaithful option. We are to be disturbing.
Pentecost is coming. We're going to go outside and make racket in the neighborhood in seven days, or fewer, depending on when you're watching this. We're going to be disturbing the peace. We're going to be disturbing. Get ready to disturb. What's happening is disturbing. Let's disturb back faithfully. Amen. The church is a faithful presence in the world. We have striven to be a faithful presence even when we've had to do everything remotely and we will continue to strive to be a faithful presence as we begin seeing each other in person as we feel safe doing that. This is the time in the worship service when we collect our offerings. And if you're watching us on YouTube right now, this is a great time to make your gift. If you're a member of Trinity Lutheran Church, this is a great time to take out your checkbook and write whatever your gift for the week or the month would be, or you can give online. There is a link in the video description below. It says, Give to Trinity. Click the link that follows that. You can also go to tlcvalpo.com. That is our homepage. And on the bottom right of the, the main screen, there is a button that says Donate. Click that. It takes you to a secure site where you can give to Trinity. If you're not a member at Trinity or you give elsewhere, this is a great time to remember to make those gifts. The church is a faithful presence in the world, and it is the gifts of God that we put to work in the church that make that faithful presence happen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life, forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. 
Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Generous Savior, befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need, especially Barbara, Thomas, Lois, Eden, Nikki, Stephanie, Bess, Barbara, Dolores, Linda, Craig, Carol, John, and Rita. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints, especially Bill and Ralph. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to that point in the worship service when we celebrate Holy Communion. If you have bread and wine ready, now is the time to get those available. And if you need a moment to get those things together, you can pause the video. We will continue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, who enthroned forever at your right hand intercedes for us as our great high priest. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our tables with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to pray with me in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. I invite you to share the body and blood of Christ and to share in our Easter communion song. On March 14th, 2020, knowing that we had canceled worship because of the pandemic and for, we thought, about three weeks, a few of us gathered in the choir loft. Our Minister of Music, Tzu Ping Chang Wang, our choir director, Janet Wade, our then Congregation Vice President, Lou Krieger Blake, my wife, Emily, my daughters, Audrey and Jane, and I got together with a tripod that Emily bought that morning on the way to church, my phone, which we mounted into it, and we recorded a few pieces of worship and placed them online on a YouTube channel that had been created moments before. 
We've been doing worship online remotely and only on Sundays remotely ever since. As we return to being in person on Sundays, we are excited about this, but we will also miss the things that we have done. I know many of us have gotten accustomed to attending church on Sunday morning in our pajamas or attending church at whatever convenient time it might be. I don't know when individuals log on, but I know somebody watches us at about 3 a.m. Monday morning. Um, so we're apparently we're really interesting late night watching for some of you. We will miss that, though church will still be online. But we will miss, though we don't want to keep doing it, things like showing up to record on our Saturdays, spending the week editing music, waiting urgently for contacting people urgently, waiting for bits and pieces to show up so they can be edited. We're spending the entire day Saturday recording, editing, formatting, uploading, emailing, hoping that it works. We are happy not to be doing these things anymore, but we will miss them. Take a moment here and look at some of what we have had to do this past year. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.